going to start with Corey Richens. And Corey Richens is a woman from Utah who's accused of murdering her husband. Uh, she has three children with him. Um, at the time of the murders, I would consider them three young children. I think they were all like underneath the age of like 10, I believe. But she has three children with him and her husband dies uh, last. Was it last year? It might have been last year. Her husband dies and he somehow had five times the amount of um, it was like the dose of like fentanyl in his system. So he passed away and she, you know, wrote a book about, you know, helping her kids deal with grief, you know, losing your dad. It's really tough to deal with. So she makes this book and she does like an interview on TV talking about it. And then later on, we find out that she is arrested. She's the main suspect for her husband's death. Um, they found some text messages between her and like a local drug dealer where she was trying to procure some fentanyl. And this happened, I think, like a couple of weeks before the death and then maybe a couple of days before as well. Like, I think there are two instances that they found that she was trying to procure this fentanyl. But um, the reason why we keep talking about Corey Richards is because, yes, she does have a trial coming up soon. But at the same time, this woman, she kind of messing up, man. She kind of she kind of doing some things that are pretty shady and she's being exposed for it. And let's talk about the walk the dog letter. Um, this is a letter that was um, it's popped up in the news maybe like a couple of weeks ago. But essentially, she writes this letter and it's to her mom. And it's basically telling the mom like, hey, tell, you know, tell my brother to say this, this and this and this and that. You know, my husband, you know, would go to Mexico, get drugs. He would plant drugs into my luggage because he didn't want to get caught, blah, 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 blah. But I do want to go over the letter really quickly and then we'll move on to um, more bullshit. I don't know. This whole thing is just it's a mess. She is a mess and she's trying so hard to cover her tracks. Like I'm trying I'm trying to give her benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, she's accused of murder, but like you should always try to give people benefit of the doubt. Right. Don't just go on to like the sensational headlines and the stories try giving her a bit of the video doubt, but I'm just, I'm really just not seeing it. I'm just, I'm just smelling a lot of BS, but starting with the walk the dog letter. Um, this is a letter that the, she's out of prison right now and the guards, um, went to her cell and they found this, you know, it's, it wasn't a letter. It was like hidden in a book or something like that. And so they open it and they probably turn it over to the state and the prosecutors. And they're probably like, what the hell is this letter? But um, let's read the letter really quick before I go into more details about it. Uh, I'm going to zoom in just in case if you wanted to read with it as well. But if not, I'm, I'm just going to read it to you. Um, let's start off with I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read up to the part where it's pertinent to our next uh, adjacent um, topic. <laughs> OK, so it's called Walk the Dog, but take vague notes so you remember. All right. Sky. So Sky is her lawyer. Um, and she says that the Sky, or sorry, she says that Sky, the lawyer, um, wants to link Eric, who is the deceased husband, getting drugs and pills from Mexico. So we need some kind of connection. Her private investigator is doing some kind of research on the ranch slash cartel place Eric would stay at. Here is what I'm thinking, but you have to talk to Ronnie. Ronnie is her brother. He would probably have to testify to this, but it's super short, not a lot to it. He would need to tell Sky at the meeting next week. Upon information and belief, in parentheses, just like they say, a year prior to Eric's death, Ronnie was over watching football one Sunday and Eric and Ronnie were chatting about Eric's Mexico trips. Eric told Ronnie he gets pain pills and fentanyl from Mexico from the workers at the ranch. Not to tell me because I would get mad because I always said he lost, he, wait, he, I always said he just, sorry, there's a little J there that's a little disappeared. He just gets high every night and won't help take care of the kids. So it looks like we might be throwing the victim under the bus right here in this letter. Uh, there are pictures on my phone of Eric passed out on the floor and in the chair. Kind of reminds me of some Johnny Depp stuff. Ronnie should have had texts from Eric talking about getting high as well. So I am curious to see what these text messages are going to look like. Is it just going to be like, oh, yeah, we're just getting high. We're eating like, you know, like THC gummies or it's like, oh, I'm getting high. I'm taking fentanyl right now. So I'm kind of curious what kind of text messages uh, these are. Now, just going back a little bit. I mean, it could look like that maybe this, this did actually transpire. And she just wants to make sure the brother gets the story straight and just to remind him like, oh, don't forget this happened, this happened, this happened. 
But it's the language and tone that she uses in this letter where it doesn't really sound like she's trying to refresh in his memory. It sounds like she's just straight up just telling him, say this, say this, say this. And, you know, this might all be BSy, but, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Um, da, 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 da. Where was I at? OK, so not to tell me he would get high. There's pictures of him. We have text messages of this. OK, so Eric told Ronnie he keeps them in an allergy pill bottle in his work truck so I wouldn't find them. Ronnie never told talked to me about my conversation. Eric finally told me and asked if Carmen could get some. I think Carmen is the local drug dealer that she was talking with. I, I think so. I'm not really quite sure. Um, the characters from Genshin look like copies of a cartoon that I used to watch a long time ago called Candy Candy. What channel was that on? Hi, Leela. Cartel Place is an aspiring author. She should take it easy with the heavy-handed cliches. LaMail. Th this whole thing is loaded with the cliches, okay? Loaded with cliches. Hi, Rain. How are you doing today? Eric never wanted anyone to know he had an issue, especially get caught. He always wanted Corey, which is her, to go down for him. When they traveled, Eric would put his drugs in Corey's bag at the airlines right before they boarded. That way, if they were caught, Corey got in trouble, not him. Once they got to whenever they were going, Eric would pull the drugs out of her bag and it would cause a huge fight. She was pissed. He would risk her going to jail for his drug use. He just would laugh about it. So, I mean, this could have been true, possibly, but it's just the tone of the letter that I just, I, it's just kind of like a BS territory for me. Um, and she's like, the way that she's talking about it, it's not like as if it really happened to her. She's just like, hey, like, say it like this, say it this way. You know, because she's not really recalling this from memory in terms of like using herself, like saying like, oh, you know, Eric would remember how Eric would do this. Remember how Eric would put me into like jeopardy with like potentially being caught with like drugs in my bag. I can't believe Eric would do this. You know, like she wasn't even talking like that. The way she's talking about it is, is as if she is just telling a story, um, a really, a really crappy story. All right. So that way, if they were caught, Corey got in trouble, not him. Once they got to wherever they were going, Eric would pull the drugs out of her bag. It would cause a huge fight. She was pissed. He would risk her going to jail for his drug use. He would just laugh about it. Eric couldn't run his image that he had drug issues, so he would do whatever he had to. Corey has never done any type of pills, didn't like them. So now we're talking about her in an angelic light, like, oh, she doesn't do drugs. And even if she did do drugs, well, <laughs> see what she says. Rarely would she consume THC, only if Eric bagged her because it was a special occasion. Now, we have this in asterisks right here, a little foot, uh, footnote thing. Uh, reword this however he needs to. To make the point, just include it all. The connection has to be made with Mexico and drugs. Uh, Ronnie, well, Ronnie, well, the messages to prove, oh, have. Ronnie, the brother, will have the messages to prove Eric confided in him about getting high. It can be short and to the point, but he ha it has to be done. Upon information and belief, LOL. It's as if she's taking this upon an information belief and she's just kind of like laughing at it. Like, hey, guys, guys, I, I figured something out. Like, okay, now we're going to do this, this and this, and we're going to laugh about it because it's going to serve my purpose. And I don't know, like, it's, she's just like, I don't know. It just seems so cocky here. Um, they never found pain pills or fentanyl in my house because he hid an allergy bottle in a work truck. Now, I wonder if that allergy bottle with fentanyl or pain pills, if that's ever going to be recovered. Um, is it does it exist somewhere or is she just going to say that like, oh, it should be in the work truck. I don't know what happened to it, but it should be there. And Cody emptied it all. Oh, and Cody emptied out the work. Oh, my goodness. Hold on a second. Who's Cody? Cody is someone else. So now she's given an explanation as to why those pills are not in the work truck. Cody emptied out the work truck within a week. So they were never found. Oh, uh, that's, that's, how, how does she know that? Oh my goodness. That's like, that's, <laughs> wow. Amazing. When you talk to Ronnie about this, meet up with him in person. I worry sometimes your house and phone are bugged. Maybe drive down to, I think that's, is that South Carolina? And meet him after work without, Bree, maybe Bree is like um, his, his girlfriend, boyfriend. Uh, Sky has to make the connection between Eric and Mexico because that makes the most sense in her mind. If it's Ronnie's information and belief about the conversation over football, she can use that as a connection. Tell Ronnie, don't overanalyze it. It was a quick two minute conversation. LOL. Here's another LOL. Tell him I need him to do this. Bring me home and then we will get those damn bleep. 
So that's Corey Richens right there in this little segment of the Walk the Dog letter. Again, this was found in her jail cell. And, you know, we did talk about this and we covered the excuse that she gave. She was just like, oh, no, 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 no. This is just part of a 66 page letter or sorry, 66, 66 page story that I was I've been writing. It's a fictional tale. And there's parts of it from my real life. Yes, but most of it just fictional. It's about me and my dad going to Mexico and procuring drugs and then getting caught and then blah, 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 blah. That was her excuse for it. And it really, it just smelled like BS. Um, her lawyer was trying to fight and said that like, oh, you know, the prosecutor by putting this letter in one of their motions, um, it violates a gag order that they had agreed to a couple months back. And they're trying to get this case, I think, dismissed. So there was a phone call that she had with her. Um, I think it's meeting with her brother, but her mom was there too, where she tries to play it off. And this is the phone call where she was like, it's just a story that I've been writing. It's a fictional tale. Like, I can't believe they're taking it. They're saying that, like, you know, I'm trying to, you know, coerce the witnesses, mom and brother, into saying certain things. Um, yeah, it's just it's just wild. So I want to talk about the this phone call right here. And uh, just shout out to Court TV. Court TV uh, got a hold of the official transcript. And <laughs> guys, the reason why I think the Corey Richens trial is going to be really interesting is because whenever you have someone who loves to manipulate other people, someone that loves to lie, okay, shamelessly, um, those are the type of people that... I do find interesting, like I dislike them, but I find them very interesting because it's kind of interesting to see the lengths that people will take um, in order to lie, protect their image, to throw the victims under the bus, um, just things like that. Um, I think that's why a lot of people had a huge interest in the Debbie Heard Her trial as well. It was the lies, the lies that were pouring in, the manipulation. Uh, she allegedly poisoned him twice before this. I did hear about that. Hi, Linda. Hi, Corgi. Sounds like she's writing another book. Uh, fentanyl was pre-gaming for Corey. She used it in the drink powder version. Uh, she came up with the, oh, maybe it was from his truck to bolster the idea that he had another fentanyl addict uh, playing on the current crisis. A taxi says, when I look at the photos of Corey Ridgens, I find it hard to fathom she would do something so evil as poisoning her husband because she looks so innocent and feminine. I feel like an idiot. You never know how people are behind closed doors. But I mean, I don't know. You never know. I, I sit there and I examine her sitting there um, when she's at the hearings and stuff like that. And, you know, sometimes she got the little like menacing evil lick sometimes. And um, you can tell she's really into like thought because she's constantly like biting in her lip. That's what I do when I'm like in like thought as well. It's a horrible habit. Got to kick it. But OK, let's talk about the um, electronic recording. So this is the transcript of it. Maybe at some point they'll release the phone call. I think it'd be really nice to listen to the phone call because you guys remember um what was her name again? Uh, Jamie Komorowski. Jamie Komorowski is a woman that I covered uh, a couple months back because she was involved in a, um, she was driving under influence. She was like, I think her blood alcohol limit was like three times the, huh, the legal limit. Uh, she had a lot of alcohol in her system and she was driving pretty fast on like this, I think 25 mile per hour road. And I think she was going like three times the speed, I think, if I remember correctly. And she crashes behind a golf cart or into a golf cart and the golf cart had a bride um, a groom, and then some of their family members. The bride was killed almost immediately, I believe. And she had these, um, you know, jailhouse calls that were leaked and they were just not good. They did not look good whatsoever. So I think it's kind of interesting to listen to these, like, you know, to look at the body cam footages um, to see how people react when they're being confronted um, by the police, the excuses they give, and maybe even their nonchalantness. And sometimes even listen to the jailhouse calls as well, because they think that these conversations are private and they, you know, you see how they really are, how they really are like towards their family, friends and other people. So um, I, I, you know, maybe we'll get to hear the, 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 the phone calls, but so far we just have the transcript. So we don't get to hear like how they're actually talking. If it's like somber, if it's like, you know, haughtiness, if it's just like, you know, them just talking normally, um, but we're just going to read it and we'll just have to take the, um, the, the text for, yeah, it's weird. Hi, Erica. How are you doing today? Hello. That was in yeah, South Carolina. Yeah, I think we even yeah, we even looked up on Google Maps to look at the area because I was just like, oh, maybe this is an area where it's like in the woods and like it's OK to drive a little bit fast. But she was in an area where it's just like, OK, like, come on, there's like, I don't know, like you really should be driving fast. It was like a neighborhood. There was like houses and stuff like that. 
But yeah, I don't know. Just don't drink and drive, man. Just uh, take an Uber. Take an Uber. Ask a friend to pick you up. Ask some family members. I don't know. Something like that. We got Uber and Lyft nowadays. Okay. Just pay for it. If you can pay for the shots, you can pay for the drinks and you can tip tax and all that. You can pay for a damn Uber. All right. And not get in trouble. All right, guys. So let's read the transcript. So we're going to have Ronnie Darden. Ronnie is uh, the brother, uh, Corey Richens. And then I think towards the end, there might be um, the mom. So I haven't read this yet. I kind of just skimmed through it, but I haven't read it yet. I just want to do like a first look with you guys um, in the chat. So we have Ronnie Darden. I'm just going to do a very, um, I don't know, typical like deep male voice for Ronnie Darden. And Corey Richens will just do like a female voice. Okay. So Ronnie Darden. Hey, Corey Richens. Hi, what are you doing? So working. So what? You can call, but not text. I guess so. I don't know. There has to be some kind of a mix up because I think because the guy that did like my disciplinary action yesterday, he never said that I couldn't text like message. He said I had to video call. So but then, oh, yeah, maybe the deputies here say the deputies here saying no, he needs. OK, so this is what the sentence says. Limit phone calls. It says limit phone calls to voice only and only handwritten letters out 90 days for what? Exactly. What does that mean? Doesn't it like only you literally do not do anything like what the hell are you they disciplining you for? And then I'm like on 30 days of lockdown, 23 hours a day, no commissary for what? Like they have to give you a reason for the paperwork. That's what they're saying for my paperwork that they illegally found, which I wasn't hiding, but it, you know, for your paperwork, what does it have to do with jail? What does that have to do with your behavior in the jail? Well, I guess the jail gets to dis do disciplinary actions too. Is that what they're saying? The jail does disciplinary again for what? And the court and they're like, they're trying to say like my paperwork was contraband. Contraband? Yeah. Yes. Like you stuck it in there. Like what the hell does that mean? Well, it doesn't make, they just try to like stack as many things on there as they could. Like there's three different, they're calling them findings and they're all contraband means any item that is that's relating an audible is illegal to be to be possessed or sold so maybe he's googling that right now yes like what the fuck are they talking about i know i know it doesn't make any freaking hold on hold on a second oh i don't know what she said anyways i have no idea how one freaking relates to the other it doesn't the fucking piece of the shit park city police told the jail what to do yeah that's what that's what fucking happened that's what, ha what is what it comes down to? Well, they just keep saying that it's a letter. It was never a letter. Like it was part of a freaking book. Like it was never a letter. It was never in an envelope or it was part of a book you're writing. Yeah. So I was like writing this book that, so basically it's like everything that's happened up until now, like the detention hearing, you know? Yeah. Then at the detention hearing, I actually get a jail. So it's like a fiction mystery kind of book, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if the brother even believes this. So at this point in this phone call, I don't know if the brother actually knows what is going on or if he's playing dumb. Um, I'm sensing maybe he doesn't know what's going on. And she's like telling him like, oh, yeah, like it's a letter. It's a bug. Blah, blah, blah. And like, I don't know, maybe he doesn't believe it. But again, we're reading a lot into it. Um, these are just transcripts. It's not like I can actually hear the voice. Hi, Nicole. How are you doing today? <laughs> so the bird says, uh huh. So anyways, at that at a detention hearing, I actually get out and I'm like on a mission to go to Mexico to like find these pills. And like and I like called dad up and like I'm like, dad, you got to come with me to do this. Like it's a whole fiction mystery book. And so like obviously it's not real. Like when dad, my dad has been dead for two years. Like, yeah. So me anyways, me and dad go to Mexico. and I mean, it's like this really long, like 60 something page book. And oh, shit. Yeah. Me and dad go to Mexico and we go to the ranch that Eric stayed at. And then we find out there's a human trafficking. And then I and dad is like trying to like find out like who sold it to him. And it was like the guy in the kitchen. And then we're like, oh my gosh, we got it. We, we recorded it. Like Ronnie, this is how ridiculous this thing is. I'm not kidding. So then dad's like, oh, it's the guy from the kitchen. Like you just sold me some. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's human trafficking here. We got to go. Anyways, we just go back to cross the border. I get arrested because I, I was out of bail and not supposed to leave the state. I write you and mom like like this letter from Mexico prison. And I'm like, get me out. Like, you got to come. Like, all this stuff, you know, like, da 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 You got to tell them. And like, I can't believe this is happening. And then I get out of Mexico jail. And then the trial starts. And I read about the trial who's testifying like they literally took that, those papers, out of a story. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I think the brother might generally believe her. <laughs> Oh, okay. Corey Richards. 
Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. It's a 65 page novel. They read the whole thing. And on the front of the novel, this is the worst part. On the front of the book, it literally says, these are true events that have happened in my life. But the but the statements, the events, or this is surrounding, it says something like that. These are these are surrounding the events of my life, but the statements, the events, the way it plays out has been falsified for a fictional novel. It's cause hell wait, it's calls. Oh, it's called. It's called to hell and back. None of this can be used against me. This is only a book. <laughs> god dude i think i think she was trying to potentially um trying to tell her brother what to say and then she's like you know what if i get caught i gotta make sure i got a cover story for this she thought she was being real smart with this she's like i gotta make sure i got a cover story for this i'm gonna say it's part of a book oh but let me take it a step farther and write this little thing in front of it where it says these are surrounding the events of my life but these statements the events the way it plays out has been falsified for a fiction novel it's called hell and back none of this can be used against me there's only a book she thought this was gonna save her ass she thought this was gonna cover her i don't know i mean it just does not look good it just seems like she really tried to think it through and she thought she was going to possibly get away with it just in case they did find it in her cell what do you guys think do you guys believe her and if you do it's okay i won't make fun of you <laughs> rain says Corey's next book is called prison life a guide unto how to not commit a crime didn't she hire a ghostwriter for the previous previous book i don't know i have no idea what in the what pad is going on in her head oh wait they put her ass on lockdown because of the walk the dog letter lola it's called walk the dog to hell and back <laughs> <laughs> and i wonder since she wanted to direct no i yeah since she wanted to direct her mom to tell the brothers what to say and she called it okay i need you to walk the dog are they is she just referencing the brother as the dog like okay walk the dog tell him what to do manipulate him put a collar on him and you know pull him here and there and like guide him like i don't know that's just it's just kind of like fucking that's weird 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 cory richens Yes, that's why this is crazy. So they read the whole book, but only the book out of the three pages that they sent to them. Knowing that that's what it said on the front of it, like knowing that I'm talking about going to Mexico with my dad that's passed away. Like what? <laughs> my God, this woman. Ronnie says, I have some more questions about that because yeah, it definitely does not read that way like at all, obviously, because they fucking, they pick and choose. So obvious, guys. Oh, God, it was so obvious that she's not trying to tell her brother what to say on the witness stand and what what to tell the lawyer as well. It's so obvious. Like, how are we how are we not getting that chat? How are we not getting that? <laughs> All right. Corey Richards, they pick and choose. And it even talks about like I said something about I want Sky to get me white strips or something like that. Da, 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 da. And then the thing is, like, so, like, I get locked down because I got, like, white stripes in and, like, some, I, I like, I don't know, some girl told me on, or, like, something, like, like, I write this whole thing and then it talks about, like, the media and I'm like, oh, my gosh, now I'm in Mexico prison and, like, the media is going crazy. Like, so, like, some of it's, like, like, so if it's, like, like, the first chapter are all, like, true what, like, everything that's played out, you know, sorry, that's a lot of likes. Should I reread that without the likes? The media is going crazy. Some of it, a lot of it. First six chapters are all true. Everything says played out. Okay, I think the sentence is worse either way. I don't know. They're, they're both pretty bad, actually. Ronnie says, yeah. Corey Richard says, the last of it, it's like kind of all altered. Like, and I said, some of it's true, some of it's not. Like, it's you, you know, it's a book. It's a fictional book. Like, and then I said something like, the media is going to go crazy. Like, you have to tell, I don't remember who I said, somebody about doing like media. And then like, inaudible had posted like this picture of the kids so i was like you posted that like this is so crazy like get me out of this prison blah 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 it's like this long long thing that's what they nitpicked ronnie says do you have like all the other pages yeah does sky know about this yeah i told her i gave it to her oh my god Corey says i know i gave it to her and showed her the front of it and it was all like in my sky folder because i didn't know how much i can say like i don't know because it's all just some of it's true some of it's not some of it's altered like it's just i didn't know what i can and can't say like in this book you know like obviously ronnie says yeah Corey says it's fictional if i'm in mexico prison we're already going to trial and he says she says and dad's alive like dad's yeah and so like and i have like all of these pages like bent like so they can go together you know like it's very clear uh-huh that these pages go like like this together and on the front of the it says like the title the characters like because i didn't change 
I on the front of it. I had like your name's Vinny. I don't know why, but I have like all the characters and then what their names are going to be changed to. But like when I'm writing, it's like confusing to think like, okay, wait, who was Stella? Who was, you know, oh yeah. Who was, so I use all of them and go back and change them to the names that are on the front of the freaking book. And it says like the title, these are the characters. Wait, sorry. These are the chapters. These are the characters. Are you fucking serious? Nothing on this can be used against me. Like, this is all mystery fiction book. It's all inaudible, which makes sense because the girl said that they had checked my cell like six times. And one of the times they spent like two hours. And I was like, so they were reading through the whole book? Yeah, they knew what the hell they had. Yeah. So they knew that it was a fucking bullshit book. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, no, this is looks like it could be a, a decriminating. This looks good. Yeah, decriminating. Yeah. Yeah, let's see this. I know. That's why I'm telling you this is insane. There was never a letter. There was never a letter in the book in an envelope. Like there was like there was never a letter. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Does mom know about this? Yeah, I told her, but she was like halfway listening. And I'm like, mom, I'm trying to. <laughs> I wonder if the mom is halfway listening because she just couldn't take the BS anymore. <laughs> Listen. You know, I feel like as a loving parent, you would, you know, if your daughter's calling from prison. And you barely get calls from her. You probably put all your attention, you know, towards that phone call. You'd be listening to her. But if the mom was like on a phone call, you know, with the daughters in prison who they barely talk to and she was only halfway listening, she was probably like, okay, this is just bullshit. Like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, 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 just, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. Pay me a dollar for every like, please. No, pay me every dollar for every like. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but a person who uses filler words like, la, 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 like a million times, like take a shot every time I say like. Corey sounds like she got fentanyl from her husband, but crystal meth for herself. Maybe Corey, she reread with Elaine's voice, just a suggestion. <laughs> no, no, no. We can't resurrect Elaine. Hi, fire. How are you doing today? So Corey says, yeah, I told her, but she was like halfway listening. And I'm like, mom, I'm trying to. When did you tell her? A couple days ago. Oh, no. The first day. I think it was the first day when I got locked down. Well, she clearly was not listening because she has not told me that. She wasn't listening to you at all. I wonder why, Corey says. I didn't think she was. And I'm like, mom, are you hearing what I'm saying? And she's like, yeah. So anyways, I'm like, oh my hell. So I didn't, I was like, okay. So I don't know if she told DJ. I didn't know if she told you. I didn't know, but Sky has a freaking book. No, nope. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Yeah, it was pretty interesting too. Like they go and we're like, dad and I, like we're hunting and we're like the Mexican guys were on the cliff and we have to pretend like, you know, like how we are. Like Ronnie, it's such a detailed book. I'm not shitting you. Like what the fuck man is happening? And then like, we find out about Marco, a guy in the kitchen. She keeps repeating herself. Like now I, she's just trying so hard to convince because now she knows that like, okay, maybe this phone call is going to be leaked. She's trying so hard to convince us the people, the viewers, that she's telling the truth. Because at this point, she just keeps repeating herself. And I feel like the brother's just like, uh, okay, I'm just probably being used as a tool here as a way for you to just try to speak to the um, the public about your defense, about this book that you wrote. Jesus. Give her the like button. <laughs> I got PTSD for me needing to recover from what if any. We'll never recover from that ever, ever, ever. Okay, so she's repeating her story again. And then like we find out from Marco, a guy in the kitchen is the one that sells the pills and we get some from him. And there's like all these like 15, 16 year old girls there that are like getting human traffic because they have this like 4th of July party. And like, why do they have a 4th of July party? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Wait a second. Is the brother criticizing her story now? The sister's story? Corey says... Yeah, I know. And even says it in there, like, we, you know, Mexican, like, we don't know if they're going to have a party, like an Independence Day, because we're in Mexico. But oh, oh, my gosh, dude. Wait, hold on a second. Did she like overlook that? Did she say that people in Mexico were having a Fourth of July party and then the brothers like being a little bit pedantic? And he's like, wait, why, why, why would they have a Fourth of July party in Mexico again? And she's like, uh, oh yeah true that yeah that, that doesn't make sense but i mean like you know they're just having a party and like <laughs> okay so the brother says like an independence day or he says because we're in mexico but the brother's like oh or he says i just yeah because i had just gotten like release on detention hearing and i want to get to mexico like right asap 
that was like when we're getting to Mexico like on the third and then like dad says well this would be perfect maybe they'll just celebrate anyway that's when like the party and the drugs will come out wait <laughs> oh Jesus Christ I think she's trying to lie on the spot right now she's trying to lie on the spot she's trying to come up with a story on the spot I think the brother is genuinely confused possibly and she's like shit Ronnie, don't make me explain this part in my store that doesn't make sense, okay? Jesus. I mean, maybe Mexicans do celebrate Fourth of July, you know, even though it's not America. Okay. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, good idea. And then we find out that they're really having a party and like they bring in truckloads of beer and all this stuff. But really, it's not just a party. It's like a sale. Like this word, girls. Like, yeah. And I write how like all these guys and women are dressed to the T, but then like they have these like 15 and 16 year old girls with them that are like their makeup's running down their face and they're like, you know, rocking back and forth. Like you can tell they're so drugged. And then I overhear a conversation with some guy that says, hey, I'll give you 10 grand for that girl. And that's when I find out like it is really Oh my God. No, dude. Everyone is blowing. Apparently. I don't know. You know, I don't watch the news, but no, they're all blowing up about this. I don't know. I wonder if the brother, once he got past the headlines and then actually read the actual letter was like, Oh wait, actually yikes, sis, this actually does look pretty bad. Get past the headlines. Okay. Corey's like, yeah, like, so that's fucking unreal. Like at one, you know, at some point, I hope this guy's going to say like what it really is. I'm sure that she will. I don't think that anybody knew. Like mom told me this as I was going in to do, I was a little bit busy and I was like blowing up. And then I got, I get a call from a reporter and I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like I was kind of, I was pretty damn pissy with them because they're like, they instantly ask an audible. I was like, how the fuck do you even know about this? And she's like, well, they're talking about this and this. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? I don't know what you're talking about. Like I kind of, I got pretty shitty with them. Uh Uh-huh. But yeah, no, like apparently you're freaking, it's all over the damn place. So I mean, that's real good now. I'm sure that Sky's going to come out and say it. I hope so. It's even like dated back to when like, it's just so crazy how like out of context, everything is. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you took those pages, but you forgot the rest of it. Well, duh. Right. Like it's because they don't want to read the rest of your shitty story. Okay. They know what was the meat of it. And it was probably you trying to get your brother to say certain things your lawyer and potentially on the stand in the future at some point. So yeah, they didn't release the whole shitty book. Okay. (laughs) Just a part that pertains to you possibly engaging in witness tampering. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Darn. Uh, Ronnie Darden. Yeah. Like, no, it makes Sky's thing was actually really good. Like they all, they all did it illegally. First of all, secondly, the gag order doesn't fucking like, it's already out of the public docket. It's already out of the public eye. Like they're trying to fuck her entire trial. Uh Uh-huh. And, and if it comes out, you know, even when it comes out as a book, like, well, so like, this is all, they're trying to fuck her entire trial to taint the damn jury. Oh, okay. We're becoming so insightful now. Hi, Alice Aurora. How are you doing today? How does she write a book? Hope she doesn't write. Like, <laughs> how does she write a book? Hope she does not write like how she talks. I mean, she wrote a kid's book. I mean, you know, it's not like the kid's book is like essays and like pages and what's it called like paragraphs and paragraphs long on one page. It's probably like what, two sentences a page or something like that. You ever see me IRL, you start saying every other word, I will legit just scream your face and just walk off. <laughs> All right, Corey says, uh-huh. Ronnie says, and it's obvious, that's what they're doing. Right, because they're, they're that desperate. It's, it's, it's just so unbelievable. And that thing you were looking for the other day, they did not do it. I'm telling you, it was not done intentionally. The thing I was looking for the other day, yeah, the inaudible. Oh yeah, inaudible. Yep, I wonder what they're talking about here. They... They didn't do it intentionally. Intentionally did not do it. No, they did. They did intentionally not do it. You just said they did not do it. Yeah. Yeah. It was never done. That specific thing was never done. And they made sure it was never done intentionally. Yeah, that is bonkers. I wonder if the brother knows what she's talking about or if he's just trying to play along because he's just confused as hell. Like we are. Corey says, yeah, these fucking morons. Because if it was done, because if it was done, it would show, you know, that they fucked up. What they, yeah. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, I can't. Inaudible? No, she didn't. Huh? Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I just, I knew she wasn't like paying attention when I'm like trying to tell her, but you know how she does. Yeah, well, mom was, mom was just on the phone with Sky and she said, you're not allowed to call her anymore. Wait, what? 
mom was just on the phone or, or mom texted this guy just saying, Hey, this is what Corey can't text for 90 days and do this, that, and other, whatever, whatever. I just wanted to let you know. I guess guy told her she can't talk to her on the phone anymore. You on the phone anymore. Inaudible. What? She just barely said that. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. And I was like, what did she say back to her? And I was like, I was like, well, no, think again. She goes, I didn't do anything. But I, mom did not hear you worth a damn. She definitely was zoning out when you said that. Otherwise, she'd say something if it was still referring to it as a letter. Oh my gosh, it was never a letter. I know, this is fucking inaudible. Well, you will have to explain it to her. I am. I'm going to call her as soon as you get off the phone. Well, it's going to be hang up in a minute. So I just want to check in, tell her, well, cool. Don't freak out at Sky. I'm not. That's all. I was like, she had like this whole thing she was going to write. I was like, no, 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 no. Just say, nope, think again. This guy's going to file whatever she wants, but you can't tell a mother not to talk to her daughter. Who else is she going to talk to all day? Yeah, I get it. But like, all right. Well, can you give mom a call? I'll let you know. Okay. I'm going to call right now. Jesus. Okay. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Audio recording concluded. What do you guys think about that? It's just horrible. Just horrible. Jesus. Shameless. Shameless, shameless, shameless. I, I don't believe it's part of a book. But, you know, maybe once the entire book is released, maybe my mind will be changed. I don't know. I doubt it. 